Hello! ELRS receivers that do PWM. I covered uh, a couple in the past. More recently, this one from Radio Master, which I use this little car. I also did uh, a plane, which is up there, and I just used the four channels. But a couple of people have commented about trying to get the fifth channel working and they, they can't seem to do it. So I thought, I'll have a look at it and, and see if I can help. Because I know the fifth channel's there, and you can reassign it, but I haven't tested it myself. Just to clarify, channel five in Express LRS is always a zero or a one. It's literally a two-bit channel. It can it can off or on. Um, it usually uses the arming switch in quads. So in PWM receivers, what you should be able to do is reassign it to a different channel and use a, a more full spread that way. So I thought, I haven't used this, so let's test it out. Let's see how it works by default without changing anything. And let's check it in version two and version three, because this and my receiver is currently on version 2.5. I haven't gone to version three yet, but it sounds like a good idea to do it. So let's see how it works by default on version two. Let's see if we can change it so we get more resolution other than on and off uh, by moving it to a different channel. And then let's see how version three works, because version three has more range on more channels. So let's go to close up and check out how it works first off. And I know what you're thinking, how did I get the time to arrange such an elaborate demonstration of channels? What we have here is the little Radio Master ER5C, uh, and I've got five servos, one, two, three, four, five, and they are linked to channels, one, two, three, four, five. So if I, channel one, channel two, channel three, four, and five up on the slider. And you see five goes from, that's a bad position, isn't it? Slide all the way up. As soon as it goes down the middle, it goes from basically zero to one. So we want a smooth movement there. How do we do it? Well, let's grab this receiver and let's put it into Wi-Fi mode and I'll show you what to do. Okay, so all I've done here is power up my receiver. I've let it go into Wi-Fi update mode and I've connected to the Wi-Fi network. I haven't done anything in the configurator or anything. This is purely what happens when I connect. Now, I don't know if on a PC it instantly pops up a window. It does on my Mac. If not, you just go to address 10001 and you should get this. As you can see, it tells us uh, my receiver firmware and the firmware version, which is 251. And if you scroll down, you've got all sorts about model match and PWM output and fail safe. So in the PWM output, you can redefine where your input and output goes. Essentially, you've got the five channels and they're set to channels one, two, three, four, five. And what we should be able to do is just set that last channel to channel six. So instead of uh, channel five, which is always set to zero and one, we should be able to use channel six, which is a slightly wider channel. Not massively, it's not full range on version two, but it should be better. So let's set PWM output and uh, disconnect and try it out again. Okay, so we're back, we've updated the settings and we can see channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, still the same. Channel five is no longer connected, so if I move this slider, nothing happens. Channel six, which is on the other side, gives us this. And you can see it moves, it's a bit jerky. If I move it really slowly, you'll see that it's, it actually has some, some resolution. What it's got here is 64 positions, but there's several things going on, um, and uh, several of which are quite interesting. And I'm learning a lot about uh, this as I go, essentially. If I pop into Express LRS, we can see here we're on 150 hertz with a telemetry ratio of one to two. Now, if I move this beyond 1.4, so let's say I want 1.64, that should actually give us um, 128 positions. Again, it still looks really jerky. The reason it looks jerky is because the way it works with these wide switches is it sends one channel every packet. So in order to come all the way back round to this packet, it takes like eight packets before it gets there. So in 150 hertz, it's a bit slow. If I was to change this to 500 hertz, then hopefully you can see that we have a lot smoother resolution. So if we go ahead and run that at 50 hertz, which wouldn't be unreasonable for a plane, that channel becomes awful. 
I mean, you could use it maybe for flaps, but the, the update rate of it is just too slow. So two things to consider there. But that's how it works on version two. Let's update to version three and see what the difference is. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've updated. And as I said, I didn't want to show you how to do this, but if you are going to do it, don't forget to download the new Lua script. There's a, a version free ELRS Lua script, which is slightly different from version two. But I did want to show the slight differences you get now on version three, which I think is pretty cool. Because one of the things you always had to do when you got a new receiver, unless you wanted to bind it manually, who wants to do that, is you'd have to go and flash it because you'd put your binding phrase in. But now all you have to do is connect something to the Wi-Fi and you can put in a new binding phrase here and it will update it and you don't have to flash the whole uh, firmware with your own binding phrase in it, which is pretty cool. Anyway, this, this is pretty much the same. Um, it, it kept my settings, so channel six is still aux two. So let's go and check this out, see what happens. And here we are on version three and the same thing's true. If we go a very low rate, then we get an awful response. And if we bring the rate up, then we do much better. However, that is standard. The good thing about version three is we get some extra options. So that's basically switch mode wide, but we've got new modes in version three, which give us full range. So if we change this to <clears throat> Uh, 100 hertz full RF signal critical. then what we get with eight channels is eight channels of full resolution if we go to 16 channels we also get it's like full resolution but only at half the rate and it's at 100 hertz but if you're flying fixed wing or anything else it shouldn't matter so let's try this out oh not well connected so that was an important point don't do it well connected i've now disconnected it So if we plug in now, so let's check that again. So we've got channel one, two, three, four, now the big test. Really smooth. Let's put uh, channel six on the same input as, let's say, channel four to see how smooth that is. Okay, so I just did a quick update there to put this and this on the same stick. And yeah, that is pretty smooth. So there you go, two options. You can either, if you're on version two, you can you can use that and you get 128 positions if you use the right uh, telemetry speed. But upgrading to version three, you can go full resolution. Now we haven't seen anything that can take 16 channels. At the moment, if you wanted to do that on something fixed wing, you'd have to take a CRS to PWM sort of breakout board. I think Maytech do them and, and some other people and do it that way. Hopefully there might be something coming out eventually where you have the sort of traditional receivers which have a whole bunch of PWM pins and you can run lots of servos and things all via your one receiver without any um, bits, but that's pretty cool. But on these little five channel receivers, you can get five channels of full range now at least. So we just have to wait for the other receivers to come out. Well, there you go, just a quick video and a, a quick tip as uh, a couple of people were struggling there and I hope that's useful to them. Useful for me as well, because I sort of learnt as I went along. That's why it might be a little bit rough and ready me trying to work out what's going on. So yeah, perfectly doable in ELRS version two, although slightly limited on range. Uh, certainly if you, if you can, upgrade to version three because you get that full resolution and that's going to be better for everything. I mean, unless you're just literally on flaps with like three or four positions, then it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I, I've delayed upgrading version three because I couldn't be bothered and nothing was broken, but I can I can see a lot of benefits in it how I've sort of looked at it. So I'll have to go through and grab all the models and transmitters and stuff and, and upgrade them. But uh, yeah, deadly, deadly cool. Uh, I like some of the new features there and uh, I've got a couple of old bigger models which use a lot of channels which I'm really looking forward to hopefully uh, bigger receivers with more PWM channels coming out that I can up upgrade them and update them on. Anyway, hope that's been useful and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.
Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.